and a very good afternoon, everyone, and thanks so much for taking the time to be with us today. My name is Sandy Elson, and on behalf of the Travel Professional Community and HomeBasedTravelAgent.com, I want to welcome all of you. Today's webinar is hosted by ARC, and our title is New Distribution Capability, NDC, and You. Our speaker today is Shelley Younger. Shelley is currently one of the managers of ARC's Core Settlement Services area. Shelley has been part of the travel industry for more than 17 years. Prior to that, she worked in the banking industry for seven years. Shelley began her travel industry career at American Airlines, working in various corporate receivables departments in Tulsa, Oklahoma, which included debit memo audits and servicing. Later, Shelley joined ARC, where she currently manages the research and industry interaction areas of settlement operations. Shelley leads ARC's debit memo working group and system provider working group. She has been part of IATA's DDX and DC meetings since 2013, and one of her current projects is evaluating the impact of NDC to ARC and its customers. A word about ARC for those who may not be familiar with it. Airline Reporting Corpor Airlines Reporting Corporation, ARC, is a leading technology solutions company providing the U.S.-based travel industry with world-class business products, travel agency accreditation services, process and financial management tools, and powerful data analytics. Please remember that you are all muted, but we welcome your questions. You can type in your question at any time in the question area you see on the right-hand panel of your screen. At the end of the presentation, we will get to as many questions as we can. So I'm going to turn the microphone over to Shelley so she can get started. Welcome, Shelley. Thank you very much, Sandy. I appreciate the invitation and welcome to everyone. Uh, welcome to the NDC and you webinar. Um, Today, I have a few goals. The first is to provide a very high-level understanding of NDC. The second is to discuss some of the potential impacts to airline distribution. And third is to really enable uh, your agency to initiate conversations with airlines and various technology partners. So without further ado, let's begin. Even if you don't really know that much about NDC, you probably know that there really hasn't been a shortage of debate and discussion and disagreement about this pretty hot topic. And depending on where you are in the industry, some people may think that NDC really kind of sets the stage for a distribution revolution all the way down to people not thinking about NDC at all. More often than not, it's really somewhere in between. So again, an overview of what we'll cover today. What is NDC and why does it matter? How can NDC change travel distribution? And where will there be potential impacts to you and your organization? So first, let's talk about what NDC is and why it matters. There are so many people out there that have so many definitions of NDC. Um, so let's talk about that first. Here is IATA's formal definition of NDC. And for those of you that aren't as familiar, NDC was really initiated by IATA to put some new standards in the industry. So this is their definition. And you can see it here on the screen. Some people look at this and really think um, that they see the words new XML-based data transmission standard. And they think that it's going to, again, revolutionize data transmission. Some people see the second part and enhancing the capability of communications between airlines and travel agencies. And they are not sure how it might impact um, the transmissions that go back and forth between the airline and travel agency and how that will impact ticketing, contracts, and a whole host of things. So let's get down to it and figure out what it really is. So what is NDC? Well, NDC is really, um, at its core, 
it's a set of XML standards. And those XML standards are used to facilitate communication between airlines and travel professionals. Um, XML is not new. It has been around the industry for a very long period of time. And in fact, it's used in many cases by a variety of technology partners. It's just that in our systems that we have today, um, where the messaging goes back and forth between the GDSs and the airlines, most often an older standard is used called Edifact messaging. And we'll get into that here in just a moment. For those of you that are a little fuzzy on the technical jargon, like I was when I first started, XML is really just a markup language and it defines a set of rules for encoding documents in a format which is really both human readable and machine readable. This type of language is typically more simple and used um, usable across the internet. It's easy to change and not as complex as most of the languages that are used today to transmit messages between carriers and technology partners like your GDSs, the Sabre, Amadeus, Travelport, and those folks. And so as you can see, you may be thinking to yourself, wow, this you know, really isn't uh, very provocative. And the standards itself are not what's provocative at all. It is the impact of implementing those standards on business processes that really serves all the lively conversation. It's what XML will allow the carrier to do and the fact that there's one set of standards out there that's really creating all the buzz. So there are actually a couple um, of different XML standards that are available through NDC. And the first one is called shopping. And this standard allows airlines to receive and return shopping requests from travel agents. And don't worry if you're still a little fuzzy, we're going to jump down into a little bit more detail here in just a moment. There's also order management schemas that cover booking and servicing and allows for the creation of booking, cancellation, refunds, and exchanges. And there's also payment and ticketing which communicates the payment information like credit, debit card, cash, or other forms of payment. And of course, also communicates the final acceptance of the offer and the creation of the ticket. There are two other schemas available. One is the airline profile. And this just allows the airline to set the parameters with the technology company of what kind of requests that they want to get. So an example may be that a carrier may decide to implement XML, or excuse me, NDC for certain markets or certain ONDs or classes of service. They may not turn it on for everything at once. So they can actually set their profile up front. And then lastly, of course, interline, which is very important, which allows for the communication between airlines for booking and ticketing, similar to what happens today with Edifact messaging, only this, of course, would now be an XML. So let's go a step further here. <clears throat> I think an interesting point to make clear is that the use of the NDC XML standards is optional. Um, airlines can choose to implement these standards or not, and they may select some or all parts of NDC in phases um, to implement as they see fit. NDC is not a system and it's not a service. It really is simply a set of XML standards. And so most people ask, well, <clears throat> why were these standards put in place? Why do we even need these standards? We've got a current messaging process that works today. What do we need these for? Well, most of us know online retailers like Amazon or Zappos. And these retailers focus on understanding their customers and creating personalized offers based on what they know about how their customers shop, what they search for, and what they've purchased in the past. Just like Amazon and Zappos, airlines want to know 
who is shopping for their fares before the ticket is issued. This allows them to introduce a lot of personalization into their business model. Today, when a customer purchases a ticket through a travel agency, generally they are really anonymous. Many searches today are still based on price and schedule. And sometimes, of course, loyalty or preferred corporate airline. But again, price and schedule is usually um, the two items that are searched. The agency, of course, is typically searching for a fare within a GDS, although you can go directly to the airline website. But within the GDS, the airline really doesn't know anything or very little at all about the person, the traveler, who is shopping. They don't know how they shopped, what they looked for, really until after the ticket is purchased. And airlines want travel agents, which again are their distributors of their product, to have the option to provide personalized offers based on who is shopping just like they could do if the traveler shopped on the airline website. And the key here is that the XML standards provided by NDC set a mechanism that allows the airline to know who is shopping before the ticket is issued. So again, personalized offers are an option. And once more, we'll see that in just a moment. An important point here is that providing personal information is not required to receive an NDC offer from an airline. That was a very important point when the Department of Transportation approved IATA's Resolution 787, which really governs NDC. One of the next reasons is rich content. And images, as we know, are very powerful. And the ability to display pictures and details about the product, so for instance, the plane, the airport, the travel experience, the seat, the seat map, what kind of meal you're going to get on the plane, the ability to basically send these kinds of pictures, descriptions, seat maps, and other product features are rich content. And for those of you that do shop on Amazon or Zappos, you'll know that pictures are very important and really detailed descriptions are very important and allows me as the customer to compare um, several items at once. Airlines want the ability to show these kind of features on their airline product, again, similar to what we see today on other merchandising uh, websites. This can actually provide travel agencies um, a lot of visual details and uh, make it easy to communicate product differences, which is really important because that's what the airlines want to do is to be able to show their product as a whole, not just price and schedule. They want to show to the customer what makes a difference between, you know, paying $600 for one seat and, you know, $600 for another seat. For agents interacting on the phone um, through your GDS display, you'll be able to easily describe options for online and for online displays. For those of you that do have an online presence, you'll have the ability to show these kind of graphics on your screen. And then the last major kind of issue as to driving NDC is product differentiation and improving time to market. A few minutes ago, I mentioned that the most common elements used in search today in the travel agency channel are still primarily price and schedule. And I'm sure most of you on the call today recognize this is the green screen. And this is often how searches are done. And as you can see, price and schedule are pretty much it. Airlines find it very difficult to really kind of differentiate themselves if the passenger is only focused on price and schedule, like the left-hand side of the screen. Um, this is especially true when agents are using this technology that exists today. This type of display really relies on the agent either remembering details about the particular airline, like the number of bags allowed, or is food served, um, what type of food, is there extra leg room, and keeping up with these kind of details for multiple airlines can be very difficult. Uh, especially when the airlines can and do change these options regularly. 
the example screenshots on the right show how details about the airline product can be displayed in a more descriptive manner. So as you can see, some of this is already being done today. Um, Air Canada is a great example. So they have the ability where you can actually hover over um, a particular setting and a pop-up window comes up and you can see a lot more details. And this is how airlines would like to be able to show their products today. The NDC schemas support getting these types of product details, which to the carriers is really a way to differentiate themselves in front of the agency quickly and efficiently. NDC, the XML standards, provide one standard, which also really improves the time it takes to get products distributed through multiple technology companies instead of updating multiple standards. So for instance, today, airline A may have a couple of different types of standards with each GDS. If they went about and implemented NDC, they would only have one standard to update, which is often a lot more cost effective. So now let's look at distribution and what NDC really means and to the agency channel today. So most of you probably already know this, but just in case, let's take a look at how distribution primarily happens today, or airline distribution primarily happens today in the agency channel. So fares and flight schedules in the middle of the screen there are distributed through third parties like ATPCO, CETA, or OAG, and then the airline sends their availability to global distribution systems. The third parties feed fare filing and schedules up to the global distribution systems, and those GDSs then pull together all of that content and build the content for the agency to be able to go in, search, price, book and ultimately create the ticket. Again, the primary focus is around price and schedule and the agency is ultimately responsible for selecting the best option or product from which is displayed in the GDS. Another important point here is that when you see these arrows on the screen, the messaging that is happening between these parties often is built on an old legacy model called Edifact messaging, um, which is costly to update and change and very cumbersome to do so. Once again, implementing XML will make this a little bit easier. The key takeaway for this slide is that the GDS actually builds the content together for the agency to search and create the ticket. So this is what happens today. In the future, let's look about how it could look with NDC. So the agency will actually initiate a shopping request. This can be done one of a couple of ways. Um, this can be done through your GDS today, or it could be done through another third-party technology company that might come along or a larger agency may decide that they want to send messages directly to the airline and bypass the GDS. Um, it doesn't matter either way, it can be done exactly the same. So this message, which will actually be done in an XML format, will be sent to the airline and this message will contain all relevant details to be able to create an offer, which is essentially a price. But in addition, you could, cr you could add additional personal details about the person. So you could include things like frequent flyer, you could include corporate IDs, or other relevant information so that the airline can then know who's shopping ahead of time, can see who it is, and they may decide to respond with a, some kind of bundled offer or some kind of special offer. You'll see a term here on the screen called aggregator, and that's probably a new term for a lot of folks. Aggregator is really just another fancy way of saying a technology company that might get into the space to transmit messages. Again, most often you think of it as a global distribution system like Sabre, Amadeus, um, Apollo, Galileo, or WorldSpan. 
So just wanted to give you guys a, a heads up on what that aggregator term meant. That's being kind of kicked around and a lot of folks don't know what that means. So as I said, um, the agent would create the message either through the GDS, similar to what you do today, or directly with the airline. The airline will then, depending of course on how they adopt NDC, they will look at the request and send back an offer, again in XML format. They'll look at the data being sent, whether or not it contains a lot of details about the customer or no details about the customer and respond with their offer. Oh, excuse me, sorry about that. Um, the order and the offer, again, um, are based on the amount of information that go back and forth. The agent can send what we call an anonymous offer, which means you don't have to include personal information. And that's kind of a key thing because a lot of people in the industry were uh, a little bit upset at hearing that, you know, that carriers wanted their personal information so that they could get an offer back. Well, it's important to know that that actually does happen today. If you think about it, if you go on to an airline's website today, you can do two things. You can either shop anonymously, which means you don't have to put your login information. You can search for a price, and you can actually go ahead and issue a ticket without ever having logged in. Or you can log into their online website, and they know who you are. They know about the customer. This is really just the same thing. It's just happening through messaging um, and through the GDS. So this is really an extremely high-level summary of the NDC model. I want to stress here that there are a variety of ways that NDC can be implemented. So for instance, an airline may decide to implement the code, the XML code that um, supports NDC in phases. So for instance, they may in fact implement NDC messaging through the GDS for ancillary fees. And a good example of this is United Airlines and Amadeus. Today, if you issue a ticket on United Airlines through Amadeus, you can actually book their Economy Plus seating. You do that through Amadeus. The messaging that goes back and forth between Amadeus and United is actually XML. So in all honesty, the agency doesn't even know that there's been a change behind the scenes. All they know is they can issue an Economy Plus seat. And the fee that's collected is done on an internal United document. Going forward, a carrier may decide if they want to include ancillary fees, maybe in one of these offers. They could decide to use an electronic miscellaneous document, an EMD. And they may, in fact, allow the agency to issue that document, or they may actually issue the document themselves. So the important point here is that a carrier may decide to do this really small and take really small baby steps, for instance, only do ancillary fees, or they may decide to implement this in larger phases and go the full model that's on the screen today. So what are some of the impacts of NDC? Um, well, a lot of this really depends on how the airline decides to implement this. Airlines have to make a lot of decision, decisions on how NDC fits into their distribution strategy. And if it does, how are they going to implement? So for instance, will the airline pursue using some of the XML schemas, like I mentioned a few minutes ago, for ancillary fees to start, or maybe for shopping and booking only? Maybe they'll implement it um, in one area of the world and not others. Maybe they'll implement it for bundled offers and everything else will go through regular messaging. It really does depend on the carrier. The carrier's really driving this. And a lot of this is going to impact how, um, impact on the technology and the operations. Airlines today are initiating discussions with their distribution partners on how they want to make this happen. Uh, IATA, of course, is also engaging with customers um, and uh, with a number of air, their airline customers to assist them in understanding how to take these steps. 
travel agents um, uh, from the travel agency side, um, the airlines, you have to think about it in terms of there may be times where you won't be impacted at all, like the United and Amadeus example I just gave you, or um, depending on how the airline implements, um, they may decide to do some sort of hybrid to start with, and so you'll really need to understand in the future how a carrier is looking at implementing NDC if they do so. How will this impact your existing contracts, the reporting that takes place, the servicing on a ticket, and the downline impact to things like refunds and exchanges and irregular operations at the airport. From the corporate manager, from the corporate travel manager side, how NDC is implemented may impact corporate reporting and data access. And again, we encourage corporate travel managers to talk with airlines, especially their key airline partners, how and if they're thinking about implementing NDC. From the GDS and third party side, NDC has an impact on their existing model, like I showed you before. But NDC also brings about a lot of new opportunities, and all GDSs um, have the ability to transmit NDC XML messages today. So all of them are already set up to do so. Again, it will be up to the carrier to decide how they want to go about this. ARC has been facilitating conversations between all of these channel partners around NDC. We've had, we've implemented a, a couple of NDC workshops where we've invited carriers, GDSs, and agents to participate. We have an NDC U and U white paper, and we're also holding these kind of webinar sessions um, as well as at our upcoming Travel Connect session, uh, we'll be having information around NDC. So now to get just a little bit deeper is what is the impact on your organization? Well, I know I kind of sound like a broken record to a certain extent, but again, a good portion of this does depend on how the airline wants to go and implement. Once the carrier does actually make a decision to use industry, use NDC, how they're going to implement this becomes really important. Um, the carrier's decision on how um, is how it is used may have an impact on travel agencies. And the following are just a couple of items to consider around technology. There may be some upgrades to systems to process and store new data elements that are part of NDC. Examples of that include what we call an offer and order ID. You'll have to consider sort of managing both NDC and non-NDC transactions in mid and back offices, in your audits, and in some of your revenue accounting systems. The agency, in terms of receiving and processing your existing back office files from both the GDSs and directly from an airline, if you choose to go that route, um, there may be some impact to those back office records. So how you take those in, how you store those, there could be some changes to that. There would also potentially be changes to corporate booking tools and, again, some of your mid-office systems. There are a lot of new technology elements. Most of those center around the airline and their decision to implement NDC. So the airline and the GDS actually take the brunt of the impact on creating the technology. Um, most of the GDSs are creating already creating technology to make it easy on the agents to actually view the offers um, that may come in through NDC. So a lot of this is being done, and ARC is actually looking to work with the GDSs to do some sort of similar, similar webinars in the future to show agents how this might look in their GDS tool. There's a world of mixing the technologies. Um, which, again, we think the GDSs are going to definitely help the agencies do, is help mix old and new NDC and non-NDC technology. In terms of data and reporting, um, we have customer reporting. So there's a lot of changes to where and how data is reported by the agency to their customers, specifically for travel management companies and corporations. 
there may be impacts to how transactions and data go through corporate booking tools, including things like um, corporate contracts, agency contracts. So, and by that I mean if you have an offer that contains ancillary fees, you have to look at your contract and say, how am I being evaluated by the carrier? So next up is sort of implementation. So there are a number of considerations here, and just a few of them are um, airlines really currently rely on travel agencies and travel management companies to apply corporate deals through the existing tools that are in place with the GDS. If the airline makes you an offer based on information provided um, on the corporation, is the carrier going to apply those discounts or are they still going to allow you to apply discounts on an offer? There's the training of employees to operate in both an NDC and non-NDC world, especially as it comes to things like refunds and exchanges and you know what will happen if there's irregular operations at the airport. Credit card chargeback management is actually um, an item that most people didn't think about before, but if the carrier decides to implement all phases of NDC and they actually do the credit card authorization, um, what will happen when the chargeback happens? Will that still be sent to the agency or will the carrier manage that? And of course, um, one of the benefits is that if the carrier makes the offer and the agency doesn't change the offer, um, will there be any need for any debit memos in the future? So if the agent or the carriers made the offer with the fare and the taxes and the fees and there's no change, the agency potentially won't even get a debit memo. And of course, servicing of customers is kind of a key deal. Again, especially when there's a weather event or regular operation. Changes around refunds and exchanges, especially when you have a deal that contains um, an offer that contains multiple ancillary services. So again, I just touched, really just scratched the surface on a lot of the issues around NDC and what NDC is. And I'm happy actually at this point to take questions. Thanks so much, Shelley. Uh, and also, do you have a um, slide with your contact information in case our agents I also? I certainly do. First, I also wanted to supply um, some information, and I'm happy to send out this deck, Sandy, if there's a way to do that so folks can actually copy this down a little easier. First, I wanted to show some resources that agents could go to to actually kind of further deepen their knowledge on NDC. So I've included a couple of websites, and there are actually some great YouTube videos created by IATA that will walk you through NDC. And so there's my uh, contact information on Excellent. the screen. Okay, great. We do have uh, a few questions. And um, okay. our first one is if you could take a few steps back and sure. uh, remind our agents what exactly is XML format. Oh, sure. Let me, do you mind if I go back in the presentation a bit? No, of course. Go ahead. Let me, okay. Let me go back real quick. And um, so this, believe it or not, this is what XML looks like. Believe it or not, it's actually a form um, of a file format that you basically, what it boils down to is XML is a file format where it's easy to send information across the internet. So it actually makes it really easy for files to be created, really easy for them to be transmitted, and really easy to be able to take them in and load them into systems. So in all honesty, what you see on the screen right here is an example of what XML really is. So it's really just a language to communicate data back and forth. I hope that answered the question. I'm happy to expand more. Okay, I I, I hope so too. We'll see if another question gets <laughs> asked. <laughs> okay. Um, one of our agents wants to know if uh, consolidator information is affected. Will this affect a consolidator's search engines? 
So um, this, of course, depends on um, how NDC is implemented. And I want to give an example of some of the things that I've seen that may help answer this question for the consolidator. So I got the opportunity to talk with folks like Travelport and Amadeus and Sabre and look at how they're taking in messages and how they would potentially display them on a screen for an agency, which would could include a consolidator. And I have to say I was fairly impressed with how easy um, the GDS would make um, both displaying NDC offers and non-NDC offers together. So from the consolidator point of view, um, kind of depends on what tools you're using today and how you're interfacing with the GDS. My my big recommendation is if you want to reach out to me, and I, I put my information back up here in just a second, I'm happy to get you in touch with um, the, the person at your GDS that is working on this today, and I can help facilitate how it might impact your specific consolidator. But again, a lot of it depends on which technology partner you're using. Okay, excellent. And that leads to our next question. Are some GDSs considering updating the command language used to access airline data? Will, people, will agents have to learn new ways to query the GDS? That's a great question. Thank you. And um, again, all of the GDSs have coded for this new XML, this new NDC XML um, schemas and the answer to your question is generally no. How they're displaying it, how you're searching um, is not going to change that much. You may be asked to put in some additional information, so some personalized information if you want to get a specific offer back for those carriers that do decide to do specific, you know, kind of personalized offers, you may be asked to put in more information. But the way I've seen some of the screens and some of the layouts, they're going to make it pretty easy. Um, if you're going through a GDS, they're going to make it pretty easy for you to be able to do uh, to do the searches without adding too much more work to your to what you have to do, which I think is great. That's what they were aiming for: is to minimize the amount of work the agent had to do. Okay, excellent. Um, and while I'm asking the final question that came in, uh, might I ask you, Shelley, to put back your slide with your contact information? Sure. And thank you so much for offering to send our agents the um, the slide deck. I want to ask our agents to please get in touch with you if they're interested in having you uh, send them all of this information. And thank you so much for offering to do that. Um, sure, anytime. Do we have an idea of when the airlines intend to implement these changes? Another great question. And it's it's interesting because from what I've seen from attending many of the meetings and having a lot of discussions with the airlines, they're really many of them are still evaluating how they want to do it. There are some that look to be moving a little bit faster, for instance, United Airlines has implemented one teeny tiny little piece of it to transmit a message about economy plus seating. Um, there are a couple of other airlines that have engaged in pilots and are looking to implement, implement small pieces. So for instance, like Air New Zealand, um, I think is looking to implement one small piece of NDC. I believe Air China is another one. Um, British Airways, I know, has been heavily involved on doing some pilots um, as well as Lufthansa, and uh, but nobody else that I'm aware of at this moment has implemented a piece other than United here in the United States. Um, but keep on the lookout for ARC because we're going to try to kind of keep up with what a a carriers are doing and kind of look for news from us. We'll we'll try to keep you updated on what's happening. That's fantastic. Thank you so much. I want to invite our agents, uh, if you come up with other questions that we haven't gotten to today, um, Shelley has been nice enough to provide her contact information. So you can either email her or there's her phone number there as well and um, get all your questions answered. Shelley, thank you so much. This has been such an interesting uh, presentation that we all can take thank a look you. into the future. 
Our Absolutely, and like like I said, happy to answer any questions or even go through this again if if folks you know need a refresher. I'm happy to do it. Excellent. Our speaker today has been Shelley Younger, manager of Arc's Core Settlement Services area. And again, Shelley, thank you. This this was really interesting, and uh, I hope you keep us posted on the progress how this uh, how this plays out in the near future. Thank you. And again, I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you very much. And thank you so much to all of our agents for being with us today. I appreciate it. Enjoy the rest of your day and we'll see you next time. Bye, everybody.